These are nine essential things that genuinely got me through architecture school. Fall semester is quickly approaching and I mentioned in previous videos that sometimes the kits are a ripoff because you don't really need all the stuff that are in these toolkits. If you choose to forego this toolkit, I would recommend at least getting these nine essential things for any incoming architecture student to survive the major. I will provide links for everything that I use down below. Number one is tracing paper. Oh my god. Without tracing paper, I don't think I would have a degree in architecture. It was just that life-saving. Tracing paper generally got me through school. Because of its high transparency, you are able to layer and layer and layer multiple things in your plan from furniture to new door swings. It is fantastic and it's also great for party diagramming and site analysis. Furthermore, you can also draw on this tracing paper with anything and it will not bleed through, which is so fantastic. I can't even describe. I love tracing paper. <laughs> Number two, glue. You are going to need multiple types of glue. For spray adhesive, I use Elmer's and I use spray adhesive for my 3D printer. Also, side note regarding 3D printers, I would not obtain a 3D printer unless you know for sure you are going to architecture school. I read some articles in preparation for this video and a lot of them said invest in a 3D printer, but honestly, that is a waste of money if you end up dropping out. And believe me, some people do and it's okay. It's just not the major for you. So please don't invest in a 3D printer unless you know for sure that architecture is right for you. The other types of glue include hot glue and hot glue I used a lot with my physical models. But for first starting off model making, I would recommend just using any Elmer's glue, like craft glue, to glue bristle together, even chipboard. I use hot glue in chipboard models now, but I think it's honestly really beneficial just for your craftsmanship to show. So start off using Elmer's glue and then graduate to hot glue. And you will need a hot glue gun, obviously, for that one too. So make sure you buy both. And the last type of glue I use is wood glue you know for wooden models if you make wood models number three would be exacto blades or retractable blades I typically use retractable blades and I just think they are superior to exacto knives but that is just my personal preference a lot of our site models in architecture school are made with chipboard so the retractable blades are better because you can extend the whole blade out and really cut through really heavy material like chipboard with a retractable blade versus just an exacto knife which is only going to have that teeny tiny top i have an exacto blade but i personally don't really use it that much so that's why i would recommend a retractable blade with blade replacements. Once again, I will link the blades I use down below. Number four would be rulers with a cork backing. Now, they sell rulers with a cutting guard on it just to make sure that if you're cutting with your retractable blade, it's not going to slip up on top of the ruler and keep your fingers safe. A lot of my friends have cut their fingers in architecture school. Uh, knock on wood, I personally have not cut my fingers open. Knock on wood, once again. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend getting a plastic or a wooden ruler just because they the blade will absolutely destroy the edges of it that's why a metal ruler with a cork back and the cork back will keep it from sliding once again really important really key here number five would be drafting dots honestly you could also use masking tape i personally have never bought drafting dots i've only used masking tape or i've stolen drafting dots from other people because i'm cheap like that and their purpose is is basically just to hold your sketching paper in place or tracing paper in place but honestly masking tape or painters tape can do the job just as well also the drafting dots or masking tape is really great to use when you are model making something out of bristol or chipboard and the glue your elmer's glue is drying and you need something just to hold it and clamp it together you can also use binder clips but sometimes the black part of the binder clip will actually smudge onto your all white model and, and then your sol number six would be a good cutting mat. Most cutting mats are dual-sided, so they'll have two different types of grid on both sides, which is really ideal, especially when you are looking to cut in a straight line. So I would recommend getting a big one too. And essentially it helps you cut straight lines and it also protects any model making surface or table that you have so if you're modeling at your kitchen table your roommates aren't going to hate you your mom's not going to beat you with a shoe it also has a 
series of angular lines so probably at 45 and 30 degrees and this is really great because those are common angles that we use in floor plan making and stuff so it once again just really good to have just to protect any furniture that you may have in your room or model making areas number seven would be a moleskin or a sketchbook now I personally did this thing where I would spend like six dollars using coupons and stuff going to Michaels and I would get a new sketchbook for uh, my studio classes it doesn't have to be a moleskin I have used moleskins a lot in the past and I really really like them but they are really pricey so I would use cheaper versions once again they do the same job I like the heavier sketchbook paper though um, if you get a moleskin I always recommend getting the sketch kind or you could get the classic with the gridded dots and the gridded dots are great on moleskins just because if you're sketching a quick party diagram and you want your lines to be straight once again really good um, and it's also good to keep proportions right and I think the gridded dots in that one moleskin edition is really ideal for any starting architecture student and also just in general for those of you who don't know I didn't know what a moleskin was when I first started college it is a acid-free paper with cardboard covering with, with rounded edges. It has an elastic closure band, a bookmark, and a expandable pocket in the back just to hold random clippings or anything that you may find inspiring. Honestly, it is such a flex to have a moleskin as an architecture major. I know that's really weird to say, but architecture majors really like carrying them around. So yeah, definitely invest in one. And also to go with your moleskin, you are gonna need some sketching pens. I feel like this was a given, good pens and pencils, but pretty soon, the longer you're in the major, the more you're gonna obsess about pens. These are my favorite pens, um, and they came with six different kind of line weights. And for those of you who don't know, or just starting out, the heavier your line weight is, the more permanent it seems or the less transparent or heavy. Um, so like a wall would be a really heavy thickness while a glass because it's see-through and it's more transparent, it's gonna have a lighter line weight. So having multiple pens with multiple thicknesses is really great. And then also I would recommend just starting to sketch honestly anything in your room. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner or a pro, it's always good just to keep those skills home. Number eight would be an architect scale. It's a fancy ruler, but you can get a really cheap one or a more expensive one. I ended up stealing a plastic one from my ex-boyfriend who is in architecture, so I hope he doesn't miss it that much, but I don't really use it as much anymore. But your first year, you're probably going to be doing hand sketches a lot, so an architect's scale is really essential here. It typically has tapered out edges and a hollowed core, and it has multiple scales, and they will teach you in school how to use it. But if you want an explanation video, I can whip one up really quickly for you. And the last one would be noise canceling headphones. I know this is a weird one because it's not necessarily a tool we use. It is a good thing to have just to block out any distractions that you may experience in studio. Now, given the whole coronavirus pandemic, I am not sure how other architecture schools are functioning with studio. Will you be able to work in studio? I don't know, but honestly, um, when things do go back to normal, hopefully soon in the United States and you are in studio grinding away, it is very easy to get distracted. At Ohio State, Knowlton Hall had a open concept so I could hear stuff from across the studio and just having over the ear noise canceling headphones, I'll link the ones I have down below once again, but those over the ear noise canceling headphones one, helped me to focus, but also two, told other people that I'm really focused right now. Please don't disturb me. Again, please hit the subscribe button. I am a small YouTuber and honestly, it means the world to me when I do get a subscriber just because I feel like I'm not alone in sharing my passion for architecture. 